And we're here today to talk about code 4364 FMI 18, SCR, Knox Conversion Efficiency Low. And there's about 31 steps in power service literature for this code. Uh, what we'll do is try and explain some of the steps in the process, but always use PSL or Advanced Diagnostics in it, Diagnostic Link. Uh, one of the first steps that you want to do in this code is make sure that you check for EGR valve uh, codes, any type of intake throttle valves, fuel codes, NOx sensor codes, any ATD pressure sensor codes or, or temperature sensor codes. Take care of those first. If there aren't any of those codes, then the next item you want to do is make sure there wasn't some EGR valve that was replaced maybe a couple weeks ago. That could have some bearing or any type of emission related uh, um, item. So if that's not the case, then one of the first things you're really going to want to do is to check for DEF, DEF contamination. And what do we do with DEF contamination? Is we have DEF test strips, we dip the uh, strip into the DEF, and if it soaks in like it is here on the left, then we know we have DEF that is contaminated. If it just rolls off of the uh, test strip, then we know it's not contaminated. Very straightforward, easy step to take to make sure you don't have contaminated DEF. Uh, the next item you're going to want to check is uh, DEF quality. And how do we do that? We have our refractometer out of our kit. You basically put a little bit of DEF in the window, close it up, take a look, and make sure you have 32.5% of urea. As long as you have that, then you know you do have good DEF quality. The next item in PSL tells you to check the DEF dosing valve at the gasket area to make sure it's not leaking DEF. If it is leaking DEF at this area, then you want to make sure you replace the gasket first and then retest. Don't ever replace the one box system because it's leaking at the gasket area. Always replace the gasket first. The next item we're going to check is to verify that there isn't any excessive DEF on the uh, DEF dosing valve when we remove it. So what you do is you actually remove your DEF dosing valve off of the unit and then you're going to inspect that area. Just to show you, this is a normal condition, so it does look like there's quite a bit of DEF here, but uh, there is a small hole in the opening. That's all that's needed in order for us to dose DEF correctly. So you will see quite a bit of DEF here and here. This is a normal condition. If you do see this normal condition, then the next step you're going to want to do is check for quantity. And how do we do that? We take our graduated cylinder out of our kit. We're then going to run a DEF quantity test out of Diagnostic Link. And then once you're done running that test, you'll take a look at the amount of DEF that's in your graduated cylinder. Make sure it's between 108 and 132 milliliters. As long as you have that amount, then you know your DEF dosing valve is uh, putting out the correct amount of DEF. If we did the last steps and we don't have any issues, then moving on with the next step, it requires us to just take a look and scope in this area where we remove the DEF dosing valve. We'll actually look into the hole here and see what type of DEF uh, it looks like through the hole. If we actually look from the inside, I've removed the DPFs and you can actually see where the DEF doses within the one box system. So this is the area that we're concerned with. The next item we're going to look at is what is not excessive and what is excessive in the one box system. So if we take a look at this picture, you can see there's quite a bit of DEF at the bottom of the one box system, but where the DEF is actually coming out of the dosing unit, there's, it's very clear, so that's normal. Same situation here, quite a bit of DEF at the bottom of the one box, but at the, at the dosing unit, it is clear. Uh, so excessive DEF is, if you were going to take a look at the, where the DEF dosing valve is and scope in this area, you can see there's quite a bit of DEF had built up right in the holes in both conditions. If we were to actually look into the one box system and take, take the DPFs out, you can see where the DEF is dosing in this condition. There is a lot of DEF at the one box right as it enters into it. This is excessive and at this point it's either due to high humidity and uh, high load conditions that would cause this. And in this case you'd want to install an awning with a template and uh, here's the service awning. We'll actually show you this in the next step here. 
Okay, if you're going to install the awning due to excessive depth, you'll use a template to actually drill two holes on the outside of the one box. And then after that, you'll come to the inside of the one box and install the awning with two nuts to secure it. Okay, the next item we're going to take a look at is since we didn't have visually any excessive depth, there are a couple conditions that can still require you to put the service awning on. If we take a look at a parked region and compare your NOx efficiency and also your inlet and your outlet NOx sensors, then what we were trying to take a look at is you can see that in this one it's starting out with low NOx efficiency. But then we get a spike in our outlet NOx sensor. This is an indicator that we do have excessive depth in the system and you'd want to install the awning. There's another similar log file but slightly different and that is you look at the parked regen and the NOx efficiency actually starts out pretty good and then as it warms up it heats up and then it drops off. And then again you get that outlet NOx sensor that spikes. This is an indicator you have excessive depth dosing in the system and you'd want to install the service awning. So let's say we've actually taken a look at everything. All these log files, the log files look good. Visually everything doesn't look like there's any excessive depth. The next item we're going to want to take a look at is your NOx sensors. And what we're going to do is compare it in what we call a low temp ATD. In order to run the low temp ATD in Diagnostic Link, you first want to disconnect electrically from the DEF dosing unit and leave your DEF dosing unit on the one box, but disconnect it electrically. Once you run the test, you're going to compare your SCR inlet NOx sensor and your outlet NOx sensor. If they are not within 50 parts per million, then the first item you're going to want to do is replace your outlet NOx sensor rerun your low temp ATD and compare them again. If they are still not within 50 parts per million, then you're going to replace your inlet knock sensor and again rerun the test. So let's say we rerun the test and uh, or we've run the test and we actually find they are within 50 parts per million. So we know our knock sensors haven't drifted. So there's one last item we want to check and that is to make sure structurally there's no damage to the one box system. How do we do that? We're actually going to look back at our original log file, look at the last seven minutes of the parked regen, and compare our SCR inlet temperature and our SCR outlet temperature. What we're trying to see is, has it drift, it ha, is the SCR inlet temperature any more than 68.4 degrees colder than the outlet temperature? If it is colder by that temperature, then that indicates there's something internally wrong. But what we do want to do is just make sure that these two sensors haven't drifted. You could go back to your low temp ATD and compare these two sensors, make sure that they were within 45 degrees of each other during your low temp ATD. That way you know those two sensors were in fact okay. So if it is colder and than the outlet, then by 68.4 degrees, internally something is damaged and you replace the one box. Let's say you do compare the inlet and the outlet temperature during this uh, parked regen and you take a look at it and there uh, it is not colder than 68.4 degrees. So we've gone through every step, we've checked sensors, knock sensors, we've gone through all the steps in PSL and we still are finding we do have conversion issues. At that point you do want to replace the one box system because obviously the SCR are not converting correctly and the next item we would want to do is use the ATD checklist to find out what may have caused what be the primary fail part. The ATD checklist basically goes through a bunch of tests through your um, engine to make sure you don't have any issues coming from the engine side that could have caused this. So that will basically go through the 31 steps in PSL. Again, this is just an enhancement to the procedure. Do always use PSL or advanced diagnostics and diagnostic link to complete your, uh, your steps. Uh, hopefully this helps and I appreciate you listening. Thanks.